Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the first Alpha Live podcast. It's a brand new podcast that we're going to be bringing you monthly on the Alpha Live YouTube channel. Of course, it's going to be bringing you all the latest gossip, happy stories, and everything that's going on around in the world of motorsport. Um, in this month's episode, we're going to be joined by the Cadet Car Championship and the Driven Dream documentary chat. They're going to be joining us. Uh, Jessica Alexander uh, joins us as well to discuss her recent Wilton Mill performance of the Teesside Sprint Series and uh, the Tillotson T4 and jumping into esports karting from real life from and the T4 World Cup as well. They're going to be joining us a little bit later on. Um, but now I'm not alone in these podcasts. Joining me will be my friend and co-commentator from the British Kart Championships, Henry Badet, as we start this new venture into the Alpha Live, bringing you all the latest gossip around karting community. Henry. Um, Hello. Well, 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 yeah, we've got a good first episode lined up, haven't we? We do. I'm going to just move my hands around because you are very, very you know, animated. I'm quite energetic. animated, aren't I? So yeah. The, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I cannot wait to start this new podcast. No, I'm, I'm yes. really pleased that uh, with Alpha are doing this. I'm, I'm, I'm good, good to be back with you again. You know, we're going to have lots of fun this year. Um, you know, both at the circuits and uh, on this podcast. And yeah, a really good, a really good uh, show to start kick, kick things off. I think we're going to be covering a, a lot of ground. We are, and, yeah. Um, you know, I can't wait to get started. No, yeah, yeah. yes. Uh, why? I'm even holding a pen, so look, look, I'm, look, I'm doing something. Yeah. What are you trying to say? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah okay anyway but yeah uh, we, we start off with of course ckc and the driven dreams guys they're going to be joining us a little bit later on in the show um mm -hmm. but uh yeah of course ckc uh, it's another well it's not a new championship obviously ckc has been around for quite a while it's third year yeah yeah third year so steadily growing it has yeah but we're going to be chatting to them a little bit later on we have a news segment as well so if you like Ooh, news the news that's why we've got yeah. our pens uh, yeah exactly I've, 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 even, I've even got some paper i can shuffle around well i've got a phone so uh, I can look at hot topics uh, straight as they appear on my mobile device, as Henry, Henry doesn't know the back end for the front end of a mobile phone, do you, Henry? No, no, no. no, no. I, know, uh, I know which way a microphone goes, and that's it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Jessica Alexander, of course, will join us. Um, of course, we'll be uh, chatting about her recent commanding performance at Wilton Mill in the Teesside Winter Series. Uh, again, if did you see any of that, Henry? Uh, well, she, I've known Jess for a long time. She's an absolute superstar, a super, super talented driver, um, and of course now she's she's you know just just got herself the uh, the most prized seat in all of pro kart racing. So you know we're, we're talking about she's now a factory driver for the MS Lucas team, which is the most coveted team in uh, in in pro kart racing. So that'd be great to catch up with her. Definitely. So uh, we'll be catching up with Mark French as well from Tillotson T4. We'll be discussing a little bit more about the, the T4 uh, carts themselves and, of course, a little bit about their eSports series that will be coming up uh, later on. Um, you don't know much about eSports, do you, Henry? No, not at all. I know about e-numbers because I, I drink a lot of them in my iron brews and other fizzy fermented drinks are available and <laughs> the, the, my, my diet, yeah. Um, no, I'm, I'm, as you know, I'm a complete technical uh, imbecile. Yes, but yeah. but I think that you know the one thing that that if there's any positives that come out of the COVID crisis is the absolute explosion in uh, esports and e karting mm. um, because of course you couldn't do anything else. Um, so it'd be really interesting to see Tillotson how they're going from a sort of a, a, a regional and Irish based thing to expanding a, a, their global reach and also now you're moving into in, into esports e as well. I'll be I'll be a keen spectator. Because mm. I've never driven a sim or anything like that. No, I think that's probably for the best. It probably is. It yes, probably for the is. seat structures. For the seat, for every, I think for everything. It's a, the online yes. community as well. I don't think they need another person <laughs> yeah, <probably don't. laughs> joining them. Well, uh, excellent. That's everything that's going to be coming up. So stick around. Uh, we'll be talking to the guys from CKC and Driven Dreams in just a moment. On to our first topic of the day. We've got our guest from the CKC Championship. We've got CKC commentator uh, David Sullivan. We've got Matty Street and we've got Danny Beat from the Driven Dreams docuseries joining us for our first segment of our podcast. David, we'll start with yourself. The first weekend for the Cadet Car Championship took place, uh, I want to say last weekend, but this is pre-recorded, so it might be uh, two weekends from now we're not sure but uh tell us from your point of view how was that weekend but for us at alpha live it was a, a cold wet and windy one yeah really really interesting i think the practice days they were both wet which meant a lot of runners were going in with very little dry running in terms of practice even the morning session some were out on wets prior to it being mainly slicks for most of the day certainly with the exception i think of one of the cadet heats where it rained on the dummy grid 
and we had a split where half of them had slicks on and half had wets and that had a real big effect on the results of that race where it was there was no standing water but wets were certainly the way to go and those people made that decision went down that route uh, really paid dividends for them and it did mean that one or two runners ended up in the b final with it being such a big grid of cadets you know 40 and everybody taking part in three of the four heats uh, points from that meant that we had some big names going in the b final joining the back of the a final when they did eventually make their way through but with it being a random grid format as well where all our runners were getting one uh, from the front one from the back and one from the middle it really paid for those drivers that made the most of the heat where they were at the front yeah i, I love that uh, looking at watching the back the the, the three heats um you know old school you know old school like you know one front start one middle start one at the back no time qualifying i think it's it's something that not many other championships do because drivers moan oh, you know about the contact but it, it teaches you how to overtake and how to race which i think it was, was really really good to watch yeah th those runners like i said that, that maximized their front of the start uh, you know front of the grid position they really sort of ended up towards the the front of the of the final um and then it was then you know they then had still have to work in them races where they've got to come through so obviously cadets was the only one that had a b final the other classes that we had there was some really interesting things going on in the junior ranks we had one driver max shields he raced not only in junior pro kart uh, and got on the podium in that but he also raced in junior road tax and got on the podium of that as well so he did eight races that day including his two practice sessions in the morning so he had 10 sessions did really really well we had pretty much domination in in our other classes as well minimax saw um, lucas blanford win all his races one of them incredibly convincing as the rest of the field behind squabbled it out uh, in the micro max which is the first time they've joined the uh, the ckc package uh, for 2022 we had a real interesting one in that one in that Aston Brown really stood out as the driver to beat. But in heat number three, he had a problem with his engine and it, he got into the lead and then it started to splutter and James Tate came through to take the victory. They tried everything in the three or four races they had in between their final to get it sorted in terms of changing the spark plug, changing the battery. In the end, they ended up changing the entire engine on that cart before the final. Um, and then he, he came through and pretty much dominated the final again yeah so yeah I, I mean really good to watch i mean what i did like most about the, 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 the watching the coverage number one as a, as a true pro kart fan former pro kart driver myself loved seeing the junior pro karts race um showing that there's there's real life in that class and it's a great start and number two all credits to the cadet kart championship you managed to organize it so that anthony jordan was on a camera out <laughs> in the cold and the wind so I can't thanks fault that, you. Henry. I can't fault you guys. <laughs> thank, thank, My thanks. weekend was complete. Yeah, thanks for that, Henry. He, he, for that. he did exercise his privileges and get the camera point nearest the cafe, though. So every time we had some downtime, he was off for <laughs> a warm drink and a snack. It is very true. I did have <laughs> several have, coffees have seen and hot the, the pile of the pile of cups around him. <laughs> It was good. It was Styrofoam good. City, I bet. It was indeed. It was indeed. But we're not going to ignore the two guys that are currently sitting away in the corner below us. Uh, Matty Street and Danny B. Of course, Matty Street, series coordinator for the uh, CKC, but also, I think, hands-on producer uh, for the Driven Dreams documentary. And, of course, Danny Beat, the director of the Driven Dreams docuseries, uh, joining us. Um, how are you guys, first of all? Yeah, I'm really good. Yeah, good, thanks. Excellent stuff. Quick, we covered quick... from the weekend, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, and uh, of course, we're, we're having a quick conversation before we started this, uh, thinking about the the amount of footage that you guys go through. Um, Danny, from your point of view, making a documentary is not as simple as just pointing a camera and, and, and putting it out to the people. There's a lot behind the scenes work that goes into these sorts of things, isn't there? Yeah, definitely. Because like you say, we've got, I think so far, we've got like four terabytes of footage um from all the cameras so we've got to go through all that obviously you can't like a scripted program you can plan the story you don't know what story is going to become apparent so you are just waiting for that story and then it's digging it through to find the footage so it was an eventful weekend so now it's just finding all the stuff to to show it to everybody definitely and matty there as well you know you you were there well you were there most of the weekend weren't you i think you were the last person to leave i think you were crying about i mean talking about earlier on weren't you <laughs> yeah, I was. I was the 
first one to arrive and the last one to leave. I was absolutely freezing by the end of the weekend. Uh, but all round, from your point of view, it was a good weekend, though. Still, we had some fantastic races and some great, uh, great racing out there, didn't we? Yeah, this this was obviously the first the first race of the 2022 campaign. Um, CKC is still sort of in its infancy, you know. It was two. It's done. This is its third season. We started with 25 drivers in our first year, 50, 60 last year, and now we're at you know 115. Hopefully, pushing for 120, 130 at the next round. So it's you know it's grown in scale and stature, if you like, over the last few years. So it's quite a a nice moment to see everything over the winter. You know, all the hard work and planning come together. And just as a as a quick question, I mean, looking at the, the the footage, and I mean, it was really good to see. There's a lot of novice drivers in your championship, which is good to see. But but also there were um, okay, so like Lucas Blandford, we know him from the, from the British Championship, and there was other drivers there that we recognise from. But there were no big teams, lots of privateers. Um, as the championship grows, you obviously Alpha have got the the, the, the live streaming of it now, so it's going to gain in stature. How do you think you're going to balance sort of making sure keeping it for the privateers and, 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 a, and a real good starting point for novices but also appeal to drivers like lucas who race at a and i don't mean to sound this but race at a, at a, a higher level or a more prestigious level uh the, the british championship level because you're a, not a feeder series but but obviously you're you're growing you know growing well, year on year that's the, that's, yeah, that's so the word i was looking for actually <laughs> yeah. that's the word grassroots <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we um you know, we we're not out to try and compete with the likes of Super One British Champs or um, you know, UKC that, you know, go for big teams, big stature, you know, all that kind of stuff. We're grassroots, entry level, welcoming to the novices and giving people the first experience of a national championship before you, you know, hopefully then go and progress and do something like British Champs or UKC. Um because as we all know, you know, as a novice or a newer driver, you, you can't just jump straight into that kind of thing, one from a, a driver's point of view, a mechanical point of view, or sometimes even a budget point of view. So we're we're sort of around and existing to fill that fill that hole and make it a championship about the driver. Nice. Um Danny, a quick question for you from myself. Um like we we're saying, there are so many karting championships out there. What what drew you to the CKC to to film the the, the Driven Dreams docuseries? Well, really, I think Matty come to us at Street Star with an idea, um, and then we went down to watch one of the like warm up weekends, and it's just like speaking to the drivers, the young kids, they know the lines, they know how the car should feel, and it's just like um, a shock how how much they know the driving and racing. So that's what really thought, yeah, this will make a good a good series just because of these little kids and the ex the experience they've got. And the knowledge they've got of racing already um, is, is quite surprising. What can we expect to see when the uh, series is, is out? What sort of stuff have we got sort of lined up uh, ready for us? Because, of course, uh, I think the initial release, I think it's the end of the year, I think you were planning. Is there anything before then? You've got a deep Welsh narrating voice that's going to be included in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear yeah there's um there's been loads of storylines that we've sort of picked up on haven't there with the yeah. drivers one of the one of the main ones that's sort of going to be a theme throughout is the overwhelming amount of dedication that people put in so we've got you know we've got a father who quit his job to support his daughter's karting we've got uh, a driver whose family's missing his brother's wedding to come to one of our rounds this year you know, so it's it's more exploring, you know, the drivers, the backgrounds and not necessarily what just happens on track. You know, we've got a range of diverse driver lineup for this year that we're hoping mm -hmm. to sort of highlight, I suppose. There's someone who travels from the Isle of Man. Is it the Isle of Man? Yeah, yeah. the Isle of Man to, to race. Um, you've also got girls who race in the same class in the same carts as, as boys. There's no like girls division and, and boys division. Um, as David pointed out, there's a lad who's doing two classes. And when I spoke to him at the weekend, he said he jumped out of one cart straight into the other for the final. It wasn't a break in between. So there's, the stories are just the, the making themselves. It's just obviously up to us to get them out onto screen so the audience can, can appreciate it. Well, I'm very much looking forward to uh, seeing it as, uh, as well. So I'm very much looking forward to that one. I'm sure you are too, Henry and David as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a, it's a really, really ambitious forward-thinking 
uh, project that uh, that no one in karting has tried before. So, um, you know, all hats off to Danny and Matty. Um, I can't wait for the first, after after it comes out, the, the first phone call that Matty gets from from a dad who's not happy that their son wasn't <laughs> featured. <enough. laughs> but but, no, but that's just You've kind of, made you know, me like, like a right It's idiot. what needs. <laughs> It, it, you know, it really is is what is what Carton is. I mean, you know, David will, will say the same. You know, we, we 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 as commentators, we do our best to promote the sport that we love. Um, it's great to see you know so many different championships being streamed, um, you know, all over the place. But this is something that really we know the drivers. We get to know them around the paddock, don't we, David? Um, but people oh, outside Carton don't. Absolutely. This, I is, mean... this is the first. You know, this is the first chance that we you've got of, of yeah discovering some of the personalities because the people will sell the sport. Mm. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's you, what you, 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 you know. Like you say, you've got loads of championships that push out um, live stream and, you know, Alpha do a great job of that. Or you've got TDI Media or UKC that do after race. Highlights here, job but, of it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's still, um, there's still <laughs> another, <laughs> another sort of element <laughs> of that. <laughs> Other less professional live stream options are available. <laughs> so Anthony, am I okay? <laughs> no, but I, I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, there, there are, there are, there's no, it, it's great because there, there are lots of different streaming companies that are, are able to push out the sport. But what you guys are doing, you're going behind, you're going more in depth into the sport. Exactly. Yeah, I think Henry as well. You know, we we we, we get invested in it as commentators. We we probably spend a little bit more time than what people realize, you know, yourself, Anthony, as well, sort of getting, getting to know these drivers, you know, and Danny and Matty are taking it to the next level. And we were joking at the weekend on comms about how Matty comes up with an idea and it snowballs and it snowballs. And by the time you realize there's, there's an avalanche at the far end of it, but, you know, credit, you know, credit where credit is due on it. You know, he, he picks these ideas up and, and runs with them. And, and but rather than just, you know, throwing them out there and seeing where he comes, you know, the, it develops and it always comes out. You know, he's got another another docu series. You know, a, a one off documentary coming about another one of the drivers we saw at the weekend, Sandro Ballesteros. That'll be going onto the BBC network in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, I know Matty had a big part in that as well. You know, credit where credit is due on that. You know, he just pick these ideas up, and they might seem a little bit left field to start with, but you know, they're, they're really, really good at the end and really good for grassroots karting. Not only. CKC, but for for everybody involved as well. Uh, excellent stuff, and of course, next round for CKC, David. I'm going to put you on the spot. When is it? Wilton Mill, first weekend of April. There we go. Good man. He remembers his stuff. Uh, well, of course, uh, thank you very much to everyone joining us. Um, David, uh, Danny and Matty, of course, thank you very much. Uh, Driven Dreams looking to be on Amazon Video at the end of 2022. Danny, is that right? Um, so that was our goal was to self uh, distribute it on Amazon Prime, but then we've had a couple of interests since then as well. So we might be holding back on that and seeing if someone else wants to take over the distribution for other networks first. Okay, there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first then of when that's going to be released. I'm very much looking forward to it. Thank you very much to David, Danny and Matty for joining us. Uh, we'll be moving on to our next segment in just a moment. We'll move on now to the new segment of the podcast. And uh, Henry, we'll start with Karting One's Alan Dove. His uh, new book's coming out. The book, the, the science behind a racer's brain. You used to race. Is there much in your brain? Uh, no. I was always concerned with what was for dinner at the end of the race. Ah. Um, but psych psychology is, uh, in all seriousness, psychology is a very important part of, of racing. And uh, uh, all credit to Alan Dove for uh, putting pen to paper and getting something interesting out there. Something different. Okay. I don't think it mentions what was for dinner, though, which is what I was concerned with. Maybe that's why I don't race it. I don't. I, well, well, maybe, maybe. I, I'm not. I'm not too sure. Well, it's available on Amazon, ladies and gentlemen. So you can go to Amazon and uh, have a look there. The Science of a Racer's Brain uh, by and uh, all good reputable bookstores, I'm sure. Um, right. And some not so reputable ones. As well. And probably some uh, non so. Uh, um, we'll move on. Uh, karting news, Henry. What have you? Uh, what have you found out on your on your travels? What? Well, um, Obviously, congratulations to Henry Jocelyn. He has been named as uh, Team UK's uh, official representative in the CIK FIA Academy, and, and Britain have got a great uh, um, sort of reputation and a great record in that. So, uh, you know, he's got uh, some some you know 
lofty shoes to, to fill and uh, lots of expectations to live up to. Um, Joe Turney as well, winning the WSK uh, on the week, uh, last weekend. Uh, great stuff for uh, another British drivers in OK uh, Senior. Now, we've just had a weekend at the start of March. There were five major karting events on. You know, the Cadet Kart Championship, UKC, Trent Valley Kart Club, Forest Edge, they had a big gearbox event, and the, and the, and the National Karting Cup. 923 entries between those five events on the same weekend. That's that's incredible. That is um, crazy. 600 of them were on Rotax engines. Yeah. I mean, you had, you, you had, you know, 64... Uh, 177s at the NKC and obviously you know Cadet Kart Championship was being streamed by Alpha Live but yeah the NKC was being live streamed WSK in Italy was being live streamed the UKC is being recorded um, you know for post-production purposes but a couple of well five or six years ago when I was commentating for Super 1 I, I landed myself in a lot of hot water because I really? the, first, the first year the first year that uh, that Kart uh, Masters was live streamed um, the weekend after Kart Masters, there was the TKM Festival, and then there was the Super One event, I think, at Lark Hall. And there was the, the, the viewing figures for the, for the Kart Masters were incredible. And people were like, oh my God, this is, this is maybe 2014, 2015. And people are live streaming it. You've, it's the way forward. It's incredible. And it brought so much that we take for granted now with live streaming. And I, I, so I had a big go saying, no one's going to see any of karting, you know, because Super One don't live stream and because no one's going to be, you know, TKM Festival, no one's going to see any of this and it's an outrage. And yeah. just now it's great to see that, yeah, on the weekend, you could have watched three different live karting events from, you know, from the UK and, and you know, in Italy, which was, I think is really good for the sport. Oh, it really is. The audience is growing. The the drivers are growing as well. You know, karting is actually becoming quite a large thing. Not the fact that it wasn't large in the first place. You know, karting in the UK has been an immensely popular thing, but now it's being broadcasted out there to the people and to the wider yeah, audience as well. Yeah, tens and tens of thousands yeah. of people, not at the track, can actually watch it. Can actually watch it, and we see that in the viewing figures as well. Uh, moving on, uh, a bit more car news, maybe. So Formula One, of course, the return of Formula One. I'm sure everyone's looking forward to that. I'm sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. That's what they're doing, isn't it? That's what the cars are doing. <laughs> That's what the cars are doing. Poor boy, boy. Yes. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the aero. They've done something with the aero. Now the cars are a bit, uh, a bit bouncy. If you thought the driveway into fullback was bouncy, you've not driven a new Formula One car this year. Uh, because, it's, yeah, they're, it's they're because up and down the a bit. Under, the underskirts of the cars. You, right. You're too young to remember the era of ground effect right. uh, that finished in 1982. Where, you know, there were skirts on the cars and, and they made the cars absolutely rigid. So they've, it's, 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 it's that in 93 you had a flat bottom car and that's what helped but now you've gone back to sort of like a ground effect style you know with louvres and stuff underneath and that's what is is creating this uh it, it's teeth rattling rattling mm. Uh, bumpy and it's, a couple of the drivers are being a little bit poorly bad yeah i say it's making some of the drivers feel a bit icky isn't it <laughs> yeah i mean have you ever felt sick oh, when you've been racing been. have you ever felt Only sick while racing I had a dodgy kebab on the Saturday night <laughs> once before the Welsh Championship Finals. Let me but guess, what circuit that was that at? Landau International Raceway, global home of world motorsport, birthplace of champions. There we go. I thought I had to let you but, get it out. Yeah, no, I, I, it, was, it was, it was, yeah, that wasn't to do with the power of my pro cart. It was more to do with the, the chilli sauce on my kebab <laughs> the night before. Excellent. We'll leave that there. Um, yeah, yes. obviously, uh, obviously. I, I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, yeah, uh, major things in Formula 1, obviously, we're all looking forward to that uh, kickstarting, of course. Um, and when this is being released, uh, of course, Drive to Survive has just been released, hasn't it? That'll have been out nearly mm -hmm. a week now of this being filmed, so I'm yet to see it. But I, I'm sure it's excellent that I'm looking forward to it. Are you looking forward to it, Andy? Yeah, I, I, I sort of, during the lockdown, I binge-watched the first couple of series and then I watched the last one. And yeah, it is. It, Again, it, um, it, it it gives an insight into behind the scenes, which you know it's it's being credited as why the, the popularity of Formula One exploded. You know, last year, um, you can say what you want about does it dramatise it? Does it create drama where it doesn't need to because the racing does it for itself? But hey, I think it's it's excellent. The more the more motorsport you see on I see on TV, the better. Yeah, 
Exactly that. And they've got the close competition now of Driven Dreams, the karting side of it. So, uh, yeah, they've got competition now, haven't they? They're not the only uh, drama docu-series in the market. Um, know, but, without, but without Drive to Survive, you wouldn't have Driven Dreams. Well, true, true. They've got competition now. That's all it is. Well, I think that's uh, as much time as we've got for the news. We've got to rattle on because we've got such a busy show. But, of course, um, when this is being aired, of course, this weekend... MX Nationals will be live on the Alpha Live YouTube channel as well. You can catch that. That's from Fat Cat's Moto Park. Uh, that will be an excellent uh, racing to watch if you're a bit of a motocross fan, a bit of bike racing. But uh, we'll move on to our next segment in just a moment. Uh, next up, we'll be discussing the T-Side Owner Driver Sprint Winter Series. That's not a mouthful if you try to say it really quickly. Uh, joining us will be David Sullivan and driver Jessica Alexander. Jessica joins us after a commanding performance at the recent round at Wilton Mill in the senior uh, pro kart class. Um, Jessica, that was a very tough weekend of racing, I have to say. The weather conditions weren't the one, and also the fact that you were stuck on slick tyres. Um, talk us through from your point of view. Yeah, I think... Um... As as sprint weekends go, it was probably probably one of the harder ones that I've had recently weather wise. Um, I think it was a bit it was a bit miserable, even from a getting their point of view. I think with with a horrendous weather forecast on the the Friday, we even debated not coming down the road because it, it could have been that bad. Um, so once once we'd made it down, we knew we were in for a, an interesting an interesting weekend weather wise. Um, it was wet on wet for most of the day on on the saturday which which made testing a little bit tricky and then and then it dried up for sunday which so it dried up for the sunday morning um it was wet for qualifying on on saturday afternoon which which kind of suited me given that we we tested all day in the rain on saturday um and then i think come come the sunday morning when it was dry that's always a little bit of a a little bit of a game changer because we we hadn't been on the track in the dry you know up until up until the the Sunday morning so a little bit of guesswork on setup I think um as we all had to do and and um the first heat was was interesting with some conveniently placed puddles um I think most of the most of the field were probably off on the outside of turn one in the first heat um on the same conveniently placed puddle that I hit on the first lap um so I uh, so yeah so the, the first heat was the first heat was okay it was kind of just a game of keep it on the road as much as you can and then Heat um heat two was a little bit easier for me. I think um I think everybody behind kind of got caught up with each other and started they started playing games with each other, um, which obviously helped helped me get the gap at the front. And uh yeah, by the time the, the rain came before the final, um which obviously we'd we'd been quick in the wet in qualifying and, and we'd been quick in testing on Saturday, so we we thought we were pretty safe when the rain came. Um I wasn't quite expecting to potentially drive up the road as much as I did. Um, I think there's a, there's a lot of very talented drivers on that senior pro car grid. So, you know, I expect a, a win by seven seconds is is a nice way to end. But but I, it certainly wasn't how I expected it to go. If um, you know, you you can't take anything for granted with with the talent that's on the senior pro car grid. So I think it was a, a game of you know starting on pole makes life easier because you 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 don't get caught up in all the the midfield stuff at the start and then and i think we got the cart right from there so yeah it was yeah. um the cart was on rails by that point which which made the final i wouldn't say i wouldn't say easy because i think um as i don't know how many people would know senior pro carts we only ever use slick tires um both wet and dry so so a, a wet race is always tricky um trying not to trying just to keep it on the road sometimes is the hard bit um so it's it's never an easy drive but but i, I certainly can't complain with with the way that the weekend went for from my point of view yeah definitely not and i'm sure someone who saw it from another point of view uh david um you know you were commentating that weekend for the t-side sprints and uh, from your point of view that that weekend again was it was quite a challenging one conditions were challenging uh wind was definitely a factor because once again on another weekend i was the cameraman while you were commentating and it was <laughs> i nearly got blow over a, a couple of times because of that wind it was a it was a horrible weekend of racing wasn't it it was. We, we nearly lost the camera up at Christmas Corner a couple of times due to the wind. But all in, I think, obviously, Teesside this year have changed their format for qualifying, where qualifying will now take place on the Saturday. And with it being a winter round, there was no practice in the morning either. So as Jess says, the first time that they actually went out on track, 
was their rolling up lap before their first heats, which is why on the opening lap of that race, I think we saw five different leaders with Jess leading us off the line. Connor Lucas got alongside and went into the lead. He overcooked it down into Christmas Corner. I think Asher Blythe had a go at leading. Sam Spinell had a go at the front. And then with by the time we came back to the boot section, Jess, who dropped down into fifth, was leading again. It was a fantastic start to a race that was, from a viewer's perspective, it was it was non-stop action for, from there on. And, you know, Jess did what Jess needed to do out at the front. And that was just, you know, lead the way and let everybody else, you know, argue behind. But as she mentioned, the senior pro kart grid, not only at Teesside, but obviously the majority of the drivers on that grid also race in the, in the BPEC, the British Co Pro Kart Endurance Championship. It's a really, really strong field. And you only have to look at the type of drivers now that, Pro Kart is getting to the British 24 hour, obviously Alpha Cover. You know, we're getting world champions, European, British champions from other classes coming and racing what is effectively an entry level adult car, you know, at the British 24 because they know it's going to be a competitive event. You know, it, it's, it's wonderful to see, and you see the size of that BPEC grid, the size of the T side grid as well, often hitting 40 carts well in excess in both. You know, it's a it's a wonderful class, even though you know, often it will have its detractors because it is a it's a four stroke class and two strokes are fashionable. But the size of the grid cannot be, you know, cannot be, you know, underestimated. And then you look at BPEC, they're almost selling out every round within a week of it opening. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm would anyone who detracts as a former pro kart racer myself. You know, the, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'll put my hand on my heart and say, yeah, I, I vested interest. I, I love pro karting. I think it, it's obviously it, it's cost effective, but in terms of, yeah, you say about not using wet tires. I'm sure Jess, you'd agree that teaches you so much that you can use in any, you know, form of, of, of racing. You know, when the track gets slippery, if you are used to driving on a wet track on slick tires, that can give you so much to driver and the style of the engine momentum is key some of the best racing i've ever seen has been in pro cars because you, you know you, you cannot make a slightest mistake you have to maintain your momentum and it's, it's fantastic racing yeah i think the i think the slick tires thing as as um um <laughs> growing up and growing up and starting karting in, in the west of scotland i think driving in the rain is is something that that I'm I'm very used to doing, um, and and I think the old everybody that started off karting and and your parents at that stage didn't want to be spending money on wet tires and all that kind of thing, and and I think that's one of the advantages of pro karts is that you don't need to, um, you know, and we can do we do weekends like we did it, you know, on a drying track like we did it at Wilton Mill, and um, the fact that we don't use wets, you know, that would have saved us potentially two sets of wet tires for that weekend. Um, and it and it doesn't take away from the racing at all because we're all in the same we're all in the same boat as as pro kart drivers. Um, we all just we have to learn just to deal with it and learn how to and and learn how to handle it. And and you do and you know and you get a lot of two stroke drivers that will potentially look at it and think, oh, you know, not using wet tires is a bit strange. But but I think that yeah, once it, you've been racing, it will help you. It will help you one day. Well, this you is know, it. This it, is. Um, it'll help you one day, but I mean, you know, Andy, you, know uh, you you know you you know might uh, might not know this, but obviously Jess drives the number forty two MS Lucas card. Now, in pro car in the world of pro karting, that is the same as um, you know whoever drives the the number twenty seven Ferrari in Formula One or the famous like number forty three Richard Petty car in in NASCAR. As long as I've been in, and I raced against the Lucas team, you know, my team, you know, 20 years ago. Um, and it's always been that, that MS Lucas team has always been at the very forefront of British pro karting. And that number 42 kart, uh, you, the, I know that you'll be racing the, in the, the BPEC series, Jess, that is the standard bearer. It is the elite of the elite seats. And I know there's been, you know, Jeff, Jeff Johnson's got a great team pro kart engineering and seven car and what have you but ms lucas they really have been the standard bearer for 20 years so a little bit of pressure feeding that jess yeah i think i think um i've got i've got big shoes to fill in the 42 i think um i, I move in replacing um josh falcus who who david will have commentated on enough of 
enough of Josh's races, who's somebody who's raced at the Teesside Sprints for, for a very long time um, and is, I believe, coming back to race at Teesside Sprints this year. But but Josh Josh was in the 42 cart last year for BPEC um, and, and they won the championship. And and obviously Josh was a huge part of that himself. So so he's left for, for the 43 cart for this year, which has left me to fill you know, to fill his shoes in the 42. So yeah, there's a bit, of, there's a bit of pressure there. I think, um, I think moving, moving straight into a team that are, you know, expected to be winning races and championships is, is always tough, but, but I'm, I'm up for that you, as a you, challenge. You, you've not, you've not started too badly though, in, in taking the BPEC O plate. So you, you know, you've not done, you've not done too bad in filling them shoes that, Obviously, Josh is a champion. Last year, he's decided to he's he's been moved into the forty three. But yourself and Josh and uh, and Jake Brooker, you've not had a, a too bad a start to the season. Yeah, I think we've um, I think we've we've got up to speed quite quickly. I think um, it's it's a very easy like environment to come into. I think Carl, who who runs the the forty two car and is you know and is the spanner man for the forty two, has done a done a really good job with us of making it easy and making it very easy for us to. To jump into that car and be fast straight away. Um, obviously, from from my point of view, we we raced in BPEC as as an independent team last year, um, and I think coming into racing for, you know, racing for what's more like a works team than what we had last year has always been a, you know, it's always going to be something difficult to get up to speed with. Um, but I, but I think Lucas of Lucas Racing and Howard and Carl have done a done a very good job of making that as easy as possible, um, which means I can just focus on. You know, on driving the car, and I think the results from the results from the two O plates have um, have kind of shown that. And and I think Jake's driven Jake's driven brilliantly. Um, his his stint at PF. This is his first kind of season in a top, you know, in a top elite car. He moves up from from the Pro Championship. So I think that um, you know that was. I think um, Jake was saying to me when when he got into the car at PF to to finish the race off, it was the first time he's ever got in the car in the lead of a race. So. Um, I think I think the the pressure's there for both of us, but he um he brought it home and he did everything he needed to do. So, so it's been a good start to the year. I think um we have we have BPEX, the first round of BPEX in in three days time from now. So I think um we've just got to be ready for it and we've got to um we've got to try and do some more of the same. Excellent stuff. Well, uh, ten minutes has come and gone already, guys. It's uh it's flown by. Um, Jess, thank you very much for uh, taking time out to talk to us. Um, a huge thank you to David as well and uh, Henry for joining me on this segment but uh, yeah it's been great stuff and uh, hopefully we'll see you racing in the Teesside uh, Sprint Series obviously that kick starting 24th of April am I right in saying that David? End of April? 20, yeah 24th of April will be round one we have got a round of the Winter Series still to go <clears throat> which Jess is in the lead of that championship as well so another round of the Winter Series at the end of March and then we get ready for uh, the 2022 summer season at the end of April Excellent. Well, we'll look forward to seeing that one. And uh, Jess, best of luck for the rest of the season. And uh, we wish you all the best. Yeah, thank you very much. I, uh, I, hope, I hope it goes as well as the winter has for me, personally. I think, but, I think um, David's got we, we shall see. <laughs> yeah, David's phone's going crazy. <laughs> no, he's got a phone call. We'll wrap it up there. We'll move on to the next segment. Cheers. Thank you very much, Jess and David. Cheers. Bye. Thank Cheers. you. Moving on now to our next section of the podcast, we've got the chats from Tillotson T4 joining us. Mark French joins us uh, from sunny Spain, I believe you are, uh, Mark. Uh, lucky for some, isn't it? Um, thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join myself and Henry. Um, now, obviously, Tillotson have just announced we're partnering up with... Uh, Tillotson for their esports series, but we want to talk a little bit first more about the actual concept behind Tillotson. Uh, it obviously it's been around for a few years now, but it, it's gone global, hasn't it, Mark? Hi Anthony and hi Henry. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, yes, our T4 series uh, started in 2019 in Ireland, and over the last uh, three to four years, we've progressed to having 25 dealers and over 500 drivers regularly racing in 20 different regions globally. So the, the, the whole T4 series concept has been quite successful. And when we started out in 2019, our aim was to bring affordable racing uh, to the karting market and to try and uh, bridge the gap between rental karting and race karting to, to make affordable racing more attainable globally. Um, since then, we, we have reached out and many 
many different regions and, and importers have taken the T4 concept on board. And from initial, initially starting with T4 Senior, which was primarily for 15 year old drivers upwards, we now have T4 Senior, T4 Junior and T4 Mini. Uh, T4 Mini 8 to 12 year olds and T4 Junior uh, 11 to 16 year olds. So it's been quite a successful few years. Um, we continue to, to, to grow monthly with many new people coming on board. No, that's awesome. I mean, you know, seeing it grow from such a, a small thing to, to it being so global is, is fantastic. And, you know, a lot of people, they, they, they say it's just, you know, Tillotson when they think of it, it's just, oh, isn't that like a small Irish uh, sort of thing? But no, f far from the country, it, it, it's massive now, isn't it? And uh, you're really trying to push it more in the UK now as well, aren't you? That's true. Yeah, we've had success in, in so many different regions, like I said, with, with over 25 dealers and across the globe, everywhere from the United States to Australia to South Africa and South America and the UK region, T4 Series UK, we've kind of relaunched things this year. I think initially when we started T4 Series UK, we were hit with the COVID-19 pandemic, which really affected uh, the potential growth and um, we had a lot of interested drivers and a lot of interested teams and, and potential partners but we we ended up having one race where um, I think it was obviously in 2021 and after that one race then we, we entered multiple lockdowns which heavily affected T4 Series UK progression. Um, this year things have changed. Um, James Mills has come on board and he's our new distributor for the UK. We have a lot of new teams like Jamsport um, some some other dealers uh, coming on board at the moment and we've been taking a, a kind of a more hands-on approach ourselves with the UK so you'll regularly see myself and my colleagues in the UK helping to promote open test days and push the concept in the UK. Uh, we do a lot of um, open test days which are free arrive and drive for, for new potential customers or experience days where people can come and rent the material uh, to try it out for a day before actually fully getting involved with the T4 Esport or T4 Series UK. Oh, nice. Uh, well, Henry, there's your opportunity. Uh, bu book your spot now. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, there's, there's, you've, got, you've got a grid space left in juniors, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're a little no, bit on the wrong no, but, side of the age category for juniors, Henry. Not <laughs> mentally, uh, I mean, not I, mentally. Not, not mentally, no, not, not, ab absolutely, absolutely not. It's, it does but, sound like yeah, we, you get a lot of bang for your buck with, with Tillis, and that's the idea, isn't it? You know. The thing is, and that's probably been the success of the category, is, you know, it's it's a monobrand series, which means everything is supplied by Tillotson. It's, it's all our products. So you have your go-kart, your engine, your tires, everything is a Tillotson product, and it must come true. Um, our dealer network. What that does is when you're when you have a monobrand category and stock material, you're limiting the possibilities for people to change seats, to change axles, to use different rims. So it creates a level playing field, which obviously is attractive to new drivers to the sport because you know, as we all know, one of the major problems with karting is it it, it can become um an endless uh, money pit for, for people. Whereas T4 series, it's good bang for your buck. The product is very well priced. Uh, you know what you're getting into. And we, we have a comprehensive set of rules and features that, that go with our T4 series, which means that everyone knows uh, what they can and can't do and you know what's, what level you're racing to. And um, that's, that's what keeps, helps keep to control the costs and obviously has helped uh, grow the categories. Um, just also we, we have in the UK, we have a junior category as well. So we have a, a senior and a junior category. And, you know, that means everyone from the age of 11 years upwards can potentially race T4 Series UK. Ah, nice. Oh, and uh, it, oh, nice. It, it does sound like a, an awesome thing to be a part of because, of course, you, you picked on a really good thing there where it, the cost effective side of things. Because for karting for a lot of people is 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 quite expensive, unfortunately, and you know to see something come through like like Tillotson, it seems like a very well people would jump at the opportunity because it's compared to what it's like in corporate karting. I've driven a Tillotson T4, and I know the difference between itself and a corporate car. It's night and day. It's completely different, and it, it it's definitely if, you know viewers who are watching this and you've only done rental karting, you know jump on the Tillotson T4 wagon because honestly it, it's it's a rapid car to drive. I heard you were quite fast when you were driving as well, Anthony. There you go. You've so had good things. You've had good things. I, I do not believe it for a minute. 
<laughs> but what it, what I will say is you, what you've touched on is, is it's a very important thing is like the, the tillets and the concept of T4 series is, you know, we, we, we try to the power to weight ratio with our four stroke engines that we obviously produce ourselves. Um, it's a very good combination and we try to focus everyone at Tillotson we're all ex-carters and we've all raced at, at, at high level within karting so we understand what we're trying to create with the products we wanted to make something that where, where it's very drivable your t4 series categories mini junior and senior um they're all lightweight the carts so coming from rental karting or even coming from you know other um current karting categories our cart is, is quite a, a, a light chassis which means the cart behaves very nimble underneath you the handling the characteristics it's very similar obviously with our four stroke 225 engine um we don't have the the same horsepower as some of the your national level categories but again you know our, our package is probably a half the price and, and maybe a quarter of the running cost price so bang for buck it, it's very very good value yeah, definitely. Uh, I think that's what's going to really jump out to a lot of the uh, the viewers who are watching this as well as um, uh, anyone who's out there who's new to karting it and wants to give it uh, a good go. Um, now, of course, we've touched on the real side of karting, but of course, main thing is that Alpha Live recently announced and yourselves, of course, that we'll be partnering together for the uh, the T4 Esports series that's coming up uh, later this month, actually. Um, now, talk us a little bit more about what was the idea behind the Esports series, because the winner of that actually gets an entry into the World Cup as well, don't they? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So our, our Esports series, um, last year was the first year that we launched our esports series and, and we actually we had a uk winner with joe fowler and he qualified from from the game and, and made his way and he actually participated in the t4 world cup in real life and he done quite well but the whole concept behind it the whole thought process is to try and bridge the gap between esports and, and real world racing and i think with our category uh, with our platform we're probably one of the only forms of motorsport or disciplines of motorsport where you can take the drivers from an esports event and you can actually put them into into the the go-kart itself because you know it's cost effective and it's affordable whereas you can't take a driver that has that maybe is doing a, a gt3 uh, esports event and you know it's not very often you can put the drivers in to compete in in, in the, the real life uh, material so yeah we, i suppose uh, we've we've been We've been uh, behind the scenes wanting to get involved in the esports world for a long time. So T4 Esports, it's been many years in the making and we probably spent 18 months developing the, the cart and 3D modeling, doing our configuration or calibration. Uh, we were working with Cart Sim. Um, we, we, we picked the Cart Sim game because for us it was the most advanced and the most developed game that was available for karting. And obviously Cart Sim is on the R Factor 2 platform. So our whole concept behind everything is to make karting more accessible, um, to try and bring more drivers from esports into the real world of kart racing, and um, that's that. That's why this year we obviously have a a big plan with with you guys with Alpha Live, and we're looking forward to our new T4 Esports 2022. The calendar is out. There's six rounds, and there's two real world prizes to the 2022 T4 World Cup. Yep, exactly that. Well, thank you very much, Mark. Of course, uh, we're running very swiftly out of time. We have to move on, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, the, like you say, eSports Series coming up. First round is the 24th of March. And of course, 5,000 euros up for grab. And of course, that entry to the uh, T4 uh, World Cup as well, if you do win that one. Mark, uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much, guys. I've enjoyed it. And I hope that you can have us back on soon to chat some more. Well, that brings us to the end of the first, well, really the pilot episode of the Alpha Live podcast. Big thank you to all of our guests who joined us on today. Big thank you to Henry Burdett, who was uh, joining me, of course, co-hosting uh, for today. Um, Henry, this could be our last episode. Uh, do we want that to happen? No, I, I, no, absolutely not. Now, this is where we need you. Not not, not you, Anthony. Not, no, not you. Me. Not me. But you. You, the viewer. Mm. We really need your feedback. Now, this is available on many different pod, uh, platforms, uh, Apple Music, but also on the Alpha Live YouTube channel. Now, when you watch this on the Alpha Live YouTube channel, please comment, like it, and comment. Say what you want to see more of, what you didn't like, what you did like what you think we could do uh, in the future in future episodes the only thing that's non-negotiable is uh, the co-hosts because we're cheap basically yeah 
Yeah. But yeah, please, please keep it because we want to keep doing this. We want to keep yeah, informing uh, you, the karting public, our karting family, uh, about what's going on. We want to do it in an informative, entertaining, and uh, enjoyable way. But uh, yeah, we do need your feedback. So please, please don't let us take us off here. Comments. <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, getting good at this social media stuff, aren't I? I should try you're all right. Yeah, 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 you're, not, you're not too bad at it, Henry. You're not too bad. Uh, yeah, but like Henry says, yeah, please do comment in below. Let us know what you think because your uh, feedback is obviously very important to us and we would like to know. And of course, if you want your story featured, if you have a story and you want it to be featured, hey, just let us know. Drop us a message on uh, Instagram. Send us an email. Um, info at alphalive.co.uk or at alphalive uh, on Instagram or anything like that. Drop us a message uh, in any uh, sort of um, social platform and we'll uh, we'll try and get it out there for you. And you could be a guest on this very show if you want to see another episode. That is the question. But from myself, Anthony Jordan, Henry Burdett, uh it's goodbye for now really, isn't it? Till next month. <laughs> is that how you wanted to end it? <laughs> <sighs> <sighs>